Hi guys, uh, follow me into the uh, paint pod. We're going to have a, a little look in the paint room now because I did some painting um, five, six days ago and <coughs> they've been sat in here uh, happily curing. I say happily curing. I don't know if you can hear that noise. That's my extractor. I'm going to turn that off because it's a bit noisy. Right, I'll be back in a minute. There we go. Yes, that's been running uh, constantly for five, you know, about five days. Um, and since I, I, since I left them, since I finished painting, I haven't, haven't been in to see what's going on. So this, this is going to be interesting. So we see, we're both seeing this for the first time. <laughs> I mean, they should re realistically be pretty much like I left them. But, you know, you never can tell. You never can tell. I'll go in here. I don't have to put a mask on because uh, the the nasty stuff will have evaporated. So there's still a smell of the base resin, which is a benzene derivative. Not that you're going to smell that because you're sat there and I'm in here, but that's why I don't have the mask on. Anyway, let's get this open. Let's go have a little look. Right, I'm going to get some lights on. Oh, that's interesting. So, oh, no, I can't because the switch is on the outside. That's fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. We got that on camera that I forgot to put the switch on outside. It's fine. We don't need the lights. Everything's good. So, yes, what have we got? One, two, three, four, so those are six. So these were done over about four or five different paint sessions. Now, I've deliberately done a few weird things with a couple of these. Uh, most notably is the purpley one here. So I've used a very liquid version of the paint, so I've thinned everything down quite a lot. And... I've extended the curing time. The whole point of doing that is because I wanted to keep it liquid so that I could put other paint on it and let the paint dissipate out rather than it sitting on the surface. So this is one of the things I can do with enamel paint is that I can be quite uh, quite accurate and be quite uh, have kind of express control over the kinds of effects that I want. So when this went on, it was sort of quite accurate, but actually what I wanted to do, I wanted it to kind of dissipate into itself, if you like, so it actually, there was no difference between what was on the top and what was underneath. So, and that seems to have dissipated really quite well, so I think that's, that's nice, I like that. Interesting. That's the first time I've tried that technique. And then on this one, so these two were kind of done side by side, so I've got um, this kind of like negative, so that's a reverse of that one. And they're these like rip in space time kind of things. So what, what I wanted to do with this was <coughs> uh, essentially just look as if, you know, you're looking into the universe and then you would just like, like put a rip in something going, Kush! you know, back to look through and it was all dark behind me just standing on it. So that's what that is. And those two, these two are just pretty much um, just like three or four colours. So we've got, um, we've got a grey and we've got cream, and we've got white, and we've got gold, and of course we've got the black. Five colours. <laughs> what have the Romans ever done for us? So five colours in that one, and then there are six or seven colours in that one, because I've also added a silver, and I've added this kind of uh, uh, maroony, which is, um, I think it's something like candy apple red or something like that. I've I got a feeling it was like an automotive colour. But anyway, that's built in there as well. So this one, having looked at it now, um, is my favourite out of them because I've got some selling going on on here. So I added a chemical to make the cells appear, which is quite a difficult thing on, on enamel paint. You can do it with resin and all that kind of stuff, but on enamel paint, it's really quite difficult. Um, but in actual fact, I'm really, really, really super chuffed with that. You know, the gold looks really nice, lent off to one side. Those few odd sort of, uh, sort of, I don't know, weird applications of black have held and maintained their shape. I've got this kind of depth here and at the other side, so I've got a real, real nice depth of that because, in actual fact, there's there's lots of light and dark in this. It doesn't all go dark around the edge and light in the in the middle. So that kind of psh, 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 really nice. I like that. Um, don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. This is more I don't know. I was experimenting with uh, with lots of different sort of techniques all at once. So this is a real kind of mishmash of of weird sort of like rivers and flows and cells and and especially shiny things, because there's a very shiny metallic silver in that, which is interesting. Then this one was um, me experimenting with uh, a pre-stretched canvas. Don't normally use pre-stretched. <laughs> just, just don't like it. It's the devil's work. But I had previously pre-stretched a 2 metre by 95 canvas, and that was that. So I thought, I'll have a little go um, and see what happens. But I have got some pooling in the middle of that, where the paint actually 
starts to, to find its weakest point, which is, you know, in the middle. Not that that's a problem, but I don't know if I can move that yet. It just doesn't feel as if I can. But it's still nice and tight. Oh, I'm just being a perfectionist, that's the thing, you know. But yeah, when you don't paint it flat on the floor, it tends to do that with the more paint that you stick on it. But perhaps the one I am most happy with, that bad boy there. Again, uh, essentially, don't ever paint on pre-stretched canvas, but I had this one that I'd done to show somebody, and it was spare. So I wanted to try a few new techniques on this. So on here I've got um, a very, very thin version of the paint. Well, actually, I've got a thick version of it, and I decanted half of it and then thinned it out. And that's why we've got kind of the pastely flows sort of going uh, across, which, are, which I think is great. And this has turned out really well. I've got to admit, it didn't quite look like that when, uh, when I did it. So obviously nature, chemicals, and a little bit of organic chemistry has gone on. But do you know what? Especially with the layering of the gold, I'm absolutely knocked out by that. I think it's awesome. I have got some video of me painting it, which I'll try and put at some point. And this is only a tiny one for me, but I uh, absolutely love that. So we're going to take it out now because these are cured. They don't smell anymore, which is brilliant. So we'll get this one out and stick it in the room and uh, stick it up where we're going to do some some photography, hopefully. That's where we squeeze out. I feel like I'm, I'm like, um, what was I going to say? Like I'm, I'm being birthed out every time I come out of that. Oh, dear. Have you ever seen Ace Ventura with Jim Carrey? You know, the bit where, he, um, where he's in the... Is it a rhino? Oh dear, classic. So yeah, so we're going to take this out into the back now. Normally, when they're flat, they sort of sit on the floor, waiting for me to stretch it around a frame. I say me, it's actually Adrian who stretches it. But because this one's already pre-done, then I think actually <coughs> this will probably just go on a stand. So in actual fact, we might as well do that. As we're doing all this in one take, I'll grab a stand and I'll bang it on and I'll show you what I mean. So we've already covered this off in other videos about these stands, which are... I look like an idiot now, aren't I? Because I can't get it off. Oh, it's because they're zip-tied. Right, OK. <laughs> that was well planned out, wasn't it? I won't put it on the stand then just now. But yeah, so they'll sit on the stand on the stretcher, on the crossbar on the back. And then here, where the light's at its best, I'll just pop it on the stand and then I'll get the camera out, shoot it, do all the sexy shots, up, down, round about. And then that will be, at some point, ready to go on the website. So, yes, yeah, so that's it, ladies and gents. <laughs> You've now come in with me into the, into the paint pod and actually seen it with me for the first time since I've actually painted it. But I've got to say, I'm, I'm pretty chuffed with that. I think they've all come out really well. Well, most of them anyway. I look forward to getting the black one and the white one out as well very soon. Okay, that's brilliant, guys. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this little video. We'll get some more updates out really, really quick. Don't remember, don't forget, I keep saying don't remember, don't forget to subscribe. Yes, don't forget, remember to subscribe, but don't forget to subscribe. Press that red button. Lots of updates coming out, some mega stuff seriously in the pipeline. It's Adrian smiling behind the camera. But don't forget to give me a subscribe. <laughs> and we'll be back to you soon with more fun and shenanigans at Suarez HQ.